This is the Huion Canvas Pro 12. It's got Huion's new laminated display and also a pen with tilt support. So today we're checking it out. What if you took all the power of the Huion 13 but shrunk it down into this tiny 11.6 inch display? What would you get? Uh, well, something a little bit smaller. Honestly, I thought it'd be more dramatic. The Huion 12 is a pen display. It plugs into your computer, becomes a second monitor, and you can draw on it using the included pen. There's something really cool about having a giant display tablet to draw on. All of that extra space, it's really nice, but there are some real benefits to having something really small like this instead. If you shift between drawing and other tasks on your computer a lot, it's much easier to move this off to the side. Or if you want to take it with you, this is far more portable, or at least somewhat portable. And you do have to bring along the main cords, make sure that you're somewhere with power since it doesn't have a battery, and you're gonna have to have a laptop to plug it into as well. So, you know, semi-portable. Another benefit is most of the displays on these Cintiq alternatives are HD. That's 1920 pixels by 1080 pixels. That's no different here, except here, you're using that on 11.6 inch display. At that size, the Canvas Pro 12 looks really nice and really crisp. But when you take that same number of pixels and spread it out to say something like Huion's 22 inch display, now you can see those pixels up close. It doesn't look nearly as good. It also helps that the colors on this are pretty good. It has 120% Adobe RGB. I can't really tell the difference, but hardcore color nerds love stuff like that. Your eyes can see way more colors than any screen could ever reproduce. All right, bud, let's, let's save that one for another video. The screen has an anti-glare coating on it. You can see it pretty well on my videos here because it's under a lot of light. It also looks really good when it's just sitting on my desk in normal lighting conditions. It also provides a little bit more drawing resistance and feels good when you're drawing on it with a stylus. You're not sliding around too much. Now the big deal about this display is the fact that it is laminated. On most of these non-Wacom screens, there is a lot of space between the glass you're drawing on and the screen below it. There's like a gap of air. That also creates effects that a lot of folks call parallax, where it can be hard to judge exactly where your cursor is because of that extra space. So the display here is more accurate than most others out there, and that is a pretty big deal. Another big deal here is that the pen has tilt support. I don't use tilt in a lot of my work, but a lot of illustrators do. And that's something that up to this point, you've only been able to find on Wacom displays, not these third party displays. Huion has been rolling this out over the summer on their 22 inch Pro. They added that after they released the product. On their 13 Pro, they released in August. It was available and now we have it here on the 12 Pro as well. And what's really impressive is that this latest generation Huion products have taken these big step forwards to catch up with Wacom at only a fraction of the price. This also has the benefit of coming with a stand. It's the same stand that comes with most of Huion's smaller products. It's not bad. You can set it at different angles. It's fairly lightweight and it doesn't move around too much. Every so often I get these devices from Chinese companies and they come with some really interesting translation quirks. For example, Huion's products come with warm tips. I think a warm tip is like a hot tip. A hot tip might be turn the oven on before you put a turkey in it because the oven has to be hot and stuff. Huh. That's pretty good advice. If you wanna see your feet, try removing your socks. That's not bad advice, it's just a little more obvious. We also have shortcut keys. The keys themselves are pretty comfortable. They have this soft feel, this like plasticky, rubbery thing along the side. Totally customizable, you can set them to whatever shortcuts you want. You also have this touch slider bar that you can set for brush sizes or zooming in and out, and it's not too touchy, sometimes they are. I feel that that touch bar is perfectly calibrated. There is one little thing that I don't like here, and I didn't like it on the 13 either. That's the fact that the power button is right here and the settings button is down here along the bottom. They look and feel just like all of the other express keys. One of the things I really like about express keys is that you don't have to look at them. You can just go by touch. There's something tactile about them that you feel. And the power button feels the same as all of the other express keys. It's really easy to accidentally toggle off your display. This isn't a kill it's not a huge deal, but it happened more than I want to admit. I just don't like the placement of those keys. I wish they were along the side or around the back or something. I've mentioned the better screen and the tilt support and how great those additions are, but there is one area where this is taken a step backwards, and that is the line quality you're getting from the pen. I covered this in my Huion Pro 13 review, and there are new drivers out now, so it might be a little bit better, but it's definitely still there. What I'm finding here is a good amount of wave to the lines. Everything else I tested 
tested was really good. It holds pressure well. In fact, I felt that the pressure curve in general felt really good and natural. I like to draw fast hatch lines to see how those do. There isn't any blobbing at the end. There are no check marks going on. So everything there is clean and looking good. So let's take a closer look at the wavy lines that I'm getting. I like to test at different speeds. I'm not a super fast drawer. I draw at a medium speed. So that's something that I like to test. At a medium speed with a ruler, you can see that there is some wave coming through. I then slow it down. A slower line gives me some wave as well. When I speed it up, that wave will start to go away. I've started doing a new test in Photoshop with waves and jitter, and Photoshop has a stroke straightener on it. So I like to draw with that turned completely off first, just to see what it looks like with no artificial straightening. And then I turn it up a little bit. I like to set it at about 5% and then I go up to 10% and I slowly move that up. Here's a line at about 20% of the stroke straightener turned on. Here's another line. This one is set to 30%. And lastly, Here's another line that I have set at 50%. Anyway, you get the idea. What I'm looking for is at what point does it knock out the wave in the jitter? If I can kill it with between 10 and 15%, I'm usually pretty happy with that. More than that, and I feel like the stroke straightener starts to get in the way of me drawing. It doesn't feel quite as natural. In this case, the line got to a point where I felt it was good for my style around 30 or 40, which is higher than what I prefer to have it at. I love where Huyana is going with its pen displays. This improved screen quality is a big deal. Adding tilt support to their pens is a big deal. And I heard from a lot of folks on my Pro 13 review that their style wasn't affected at all by the pen wave that I record in my videos and that they didn't even notice it. Right now on my website on my big list of pen displays, I'm putting this uh, tied at number two right underneath the XP Pen 12 on my list of smaller display tablets. You're getting some great features here at a good price. And right now I'm seeing it for around $270. The 13 is around $400. When I grade these kind of devices, I tend to grade on a curve. Because this device is so inexpensive, $270 is a pretty good deal for a pen display. It's one of the cheapest ones you can buy, and it does so many things so well at that price that I have to say that this is pretty good, and for a lot of people, it's going to be a great product. For me personally, I don't want to use it just because of the wavy lines. I draw a lot of ink lines. They have to be perfect, so I would prefer to go with something like the XP Pen 12, which doesn't have that problem but this covers for the XP Pen 12 in other really important ways, mainly the screen and the tilt. And at $300, I really don't expect a Wacom Cintiq level of quality. So you are making some compromises there, but they're, they're pretty good compromises to make. What do you think? Let me know down below in the comment section below. That is all I have for today. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in a couple of days.